Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a basic jump scare, which you can change however you like. This is just the basic fundamentals of a jump scare. And this example, I'm going to be doing a ghost or a girl running down this corridor. So as you're walking down here, it will run through here and play a sound effect as it happens. So for this, I've created a simple character in Fuse, which doesn't look like a ghost but this is just a very quick one I made which obviously as it goes past quickly you won't be able to tell that much and then I've also animated it using Mixmo as well with this walk which we'll be using and then I've also just like I say created this little corridor here just in the third person example map so I've put a roof on it all and then these walls here like so so without further ado let's get right into it so first we're going to obviously import our character and the animation so I'll make a new folder here, so I'll right click, new folder, I'm just going to call this ghost, or jump scare, or whatever you like. So let's open that up, and let's drag and drop our character in here, first of all. So drag and drop the character in. You want to import the skeletal mesh and mesh, and leave this all like that, and import all. And you can close this, and once again I'm just going to organise this a bit more, so move all the materials and textures into a separate folder. So we just have the skeletal mesh, and everything else that we need. So once you've imported that and got it all organised to how you want, we'll then import the animation. So again, just drag and drop that in there as well. I'm going to do it in the same folder, but you can do this wherever you like. And this, we are, we're not going to import the mesh. And as the skeleton, we're going to use the character we just imported. So mine is female ghost underscore one underscore skeleton. So make sure you choose the correct one. And obviously leave all these the same as well. And again, hit import all. Close this, and you now have the animation as well. So then for the character, what we're going to do is just duplicate our third person character or your first person, basically just the player character you have. So for me, that's third person BP, blueprints, third person character. So I'm just gonna hit control C on that and go back to our ghost jump scare folder and hit control V. So we now have a character in there as well. I'm just gonna hit F2 to rename that. I'm gonna call this female ghost one, just like so. And then we'll open that up straight away. And then we'll go into the viewport like this. And oh yeah, I also changed it so it is in first person perspective as well. And then what we'll do is we can delete the camera the camera boom, we don't need any of that. And what we'll do is we'll click on the mesh itself and then we'll change the skeletal mesh down here from the mannequin to our female ghost or whichever one you want it to be. Now you may have issues like this where it looks a bit weird, kind of transparent. That's sometimes because I used Adobe Fuse and then Mixmo and sometimes when you download it from there, once it's gone through all the process, it sometimes makes this look a bit weird and see-through. So it's very easy to fix. You just have to go through the materials. So it will open up the materials and you just have to change a little setting in there. So once you open, you wanna go down here and where it says blend mode translucent, you wanna just hit the little arrow to reset to default and have it as opaque. So then if we hit apply and do that for all of these, you should see this should fix the issue. So there we go, you can see that it's fixed the problem and it obviously looks a lot better now. So now we've done that, we'll click on it again and then where it says animation mode, because we're just going to have it as a running animation because that's the only time you'll see it that's all we need to do so we'll click that from use animation blueprint and then use animation asset and the animation to play will be the running one we just put in so that's called scary walk for me and it looks like that so obviously not too great this is just again a free quick one i got off mixmo but it will get the job done so let's hit compile and now we can minimize this so let's import the jump scare sound effect and i'm just going to put this again in the same folder as this is all for the same one jump scare so again, just drag and drop that in there. And I haven't done this properly because you need to make sure that it is a .wav 16-bit file. So let me just delete that and change that now. So let's try that again. There we go, now this works. So it's a .wav 16-bit file. So if I just test this out by hitting play. It sounds something like that, which again is obviously just a classic jump scare sound effect. So this is gonna be triggered by a box collision. So it'll be when the character walks over a box collision in a certain area, this jump scare will play. So let's get that. So in the top left, just search box trigger, like so. And we'll just drag and drop that into the level here. And then we'll decide where we want it. I'm gonna put it back around about here. So you're not too close, you're not too far away. And then I'll scale it up to the size I want it to be. So this is where the player walks through. This is where it's gonna trigger. So you need to make sure it's big enough for the player to actually be able to interact with it, but not, not too big that you might get it out of bounds. So if it went through this wall, for example, and the player walked through there, then it would fire off, which obviously you don't want. So we'll have it like that, and I think that should be good. So now if we open the level blueprint, so up here, blueprints, and then open level blueprint, this is where we're gonna do the code for it. And then we'll just right click, and we'll get event begin on overlap. So add on actor begin overlap for the event trigger box one. 
So there we go. And the other actor, we're going to want to make sure this is our character. So it's only if our character walks through this, it will fire off. So we're going to cast to third person character or whichever one you are using. It could be first person, just the name of the character. So then after this, after the cast, I'm just going to drag off. I'm going to do play sound at location like this. And the sound is obviously going to be our jump scare sound effect. So it'd be jump scare sound effect like that. You could do this at location or play sound 2D, but I'm going to do location for the moment. The only difference is the location is obviously at the desired spot you choose. Sound 2D is just everywhere, so you just hear it in the headphones or on your speakers. So for location, I'm going to show you that as it's obviously more difficult. For sound 2D, you just put it in. Location, I'll show you how to do that. So as third person character, what we're going to do is get actor location, and we'll just plug that straight into there like so. That one is as simple as that. And what we want to do next is use AI Move 2. So what we'll do is drag off of this and get all actors of class. First off, like that. So get all actors of class. And the actor class, we want to be female ghost underscore one BP. Out actors, we want to get a copy, the green function there. And then we'll drag off of the get all actors of class and get an AI Move 2. Make sure it's the white box there underneath tasks. And for the pawn, we'll plug that into the get a copy like so. And then for the destination, this is obviously where we want it to end. So if we just make this a bit smaller, but so we can still see the screen like this, if we find where we want it to be. So actually let's minimize it for a second. We're having it start there. We want it to walk along here like this. And let's say end there. So we then use this location in the bottom right down here under the details panel and we'll input that in. So let's open this up again and the destination we're going to put as 899.9920 and then 266 like that. So then let's put this back in the starting position we want it to be in. So let's say around there and let's make this bigger again. And then if we hit compile, minimize this and then hit play to test this, if we walk forwards as we go through the box trigger, the sound plays in the background, but as you see, the character doesn't move. And this is because we haven't got a nav mesh in yet. And the nav mesh is just what allows AI to move around. So we want nav mesh bounds volume, like so. And obviously you make this as big as you want, so cover the whole map if you want. But for me, all I need is this little area here. So I'll just do that, make it big enough. And then let's test this again. So hit play, walk forwards. You heard the sound effect in the background and saw the ghost character walk along there. Now obviously it's still there so we can change that so it isn't there all the time before you walk through it or after you walk through it and walk through the door. So if we go back in, what we can simply do is on success if we just destroy actor like so. So just destroy actor and that will just get rid of itself. But what we want to do is actually have this so out of the get there, put that into there like that. So if we can hit compile and test this again. We have the sound effect, it then moves along the screen and it has disappeared. So when you walk around the corner, it isn't there anymore. So I'll show you that again as it works perfectly. So we walk forwards through this trigger box, place the sound effect and the ghost walks in front of us like that. So I think that'll be it for this video. We've done everything we wanted to do and it works perfectly. We've got it so the character can walk forwards through a box trigger, it plays a sound effect and then a ghost walks in front of the player and works as a jump scare like so. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below, it helps me out a lot. So thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.